Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, it's a notepad review, a review of a notepad that was gifted to me from my wife during the Ink Event series of videos. The notepad is this one. This is made by Apica, and I got this from Pulp Addiction. I will be honest, I'm hoping it's nicer than the last notepad I had from Pulp Addiction, which was that memo one, oh, worst notepad I've ever had. This one though, I've been recommending the paper by a number of people. It's not a very big notebook, so it'll be interesting to look through it. Join me now, down on the table, we'll take a look at the notepad. Then what we'll do is we'll try out various pens and inks in it to see how they perform. And I'll give you my thoughts, my initial thoughts on this notebook. Starting the video with a book on its side, just so you can see the full size. This is an A5 notebook, so let's turn it around. So it's made by Apica, right down here at the bottom, that's where we've got Apica. I went for this creamy coloured cover, there's loads of different cover colours. We've got notebook, most advanced quality, gives best writing features. Well, we'll see, won't we? Then there's some lines so you can write your name or any details that you want on that front cover. The side here, we've got a black border we've got cd and then 11. over on the back fairly plain we've got barcode we've got here 148 by 210 millimeters so a5 size 28 there's 28 pages which is 56 sheets made in japan then cd 11 wn i'm guessing that's the down to the color code and the size then we've got a load of japanese down here on the bottom so a fairly plain cover. Opening it up, plain on the inside, and we get straight into the paper. So no cover pages, no bump, straight into the pages that we want to write on, which is nice to see. Just going to open this at any page, so I'm going fairly at random. The paper, not quite a white to me. It's like a, uh, like a slightly off-white, so a little bit of a creamy colour. It's described as being acid free. It's 80 GSM paper, Japanese paper. Feels nice, doesn't feel like there's a coating on it, but feels fairly smooth, there's no texture into it. We've got these lines here. These are seven millimeter spacing. There's 25 lines per sheet. And it's like a soft gray, so it's not in your face if it was black. Looks quite nice, so again, let's just go Okay, I'm opening up at random pages. Looks quite nice. Looks like a quite nice notepad. You'll have to excuse, I've got my desk fan on, which is blowing the paper a bit. Let's go to the back. So on the back inside cover, again, it's plain. And this is where I've been doing my ink tests. So I've already written with four pens. Let's give these time to dry. So the first pen was a Jinhao 997. And this has got a 1.1 stub in it. And that's got Colt Pen's Little Bob. The idea is I want to essentially stress test the page. I want to try it with lots of different inks, different colours, different types of nibs, just to try it out and see how it works with fountain pens. So I thought I'd start with that really nice wide 1.1 stub nib. This ink, as you can see here from where I did my little swatch, it's like a dark crimsony type colour, but it's got loads of like this greeny gold sheen which comes out really well next up was a Jinhao 80 this has got a fine nib and in here i've got robert oster fire engine red so going from one end of the spectrum down to the next really then again i'm just doing a little quick drying test next up we've got the Jinhao 9019 i don't know what my brain was thinking of when i wrote that because i knew what the pen was and Noodle is Navajo Turquoise. So we've got here, this is an ink with a nice bit of shading in it. And we can see that coming through. We can see plenty of shading. A little bit of feathering here on the J, but not a lot. And then the rest of it, there was no feathering. Then the final pen I've already wrote with, this is the Canwright Heritage. This has got a broad nib on it. There we go. Piston filling pen, this one. And the ink in here, Ferris Wheel Press Buttered Popcorn. So this looks like a fairly wet combo. You can see there the drying. To be honest, all of them apart from that fine looked fairly wet. 
And again, we're seeing plenty of shading coming through in the writing here, especially, especially using this fairly pale ink. So I thought that was another good one. So the pens we're now going to write with, I've got four more pens. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out. And as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos. And then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel. A link will be in the description down below. The first one, I'm actually agitating this now as was talking. This is an Asvine P20. We've got a medium nib on here. This is a steel nib. The ink in here, why I'm agitating it, this is by Diamine, it's Diamine Glacier, which has got that star bright, so masses of like chameleon and shimmer. Thought this would be a good one to see how it performs. So hopefully we've agitated that enough and got enough of that into suspension. So we've got here an Asvine. It's very, very smooth this. And it's the P20 with a medium nib. And it's Diamine Glacier. Now, just in case, let's just do a little swatch there as well. Let's do, you know, I want to give a chance for the paper to really perform with this shimmer ink. Up next, we've got another sheening ink. That's in this. This is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. This has got a medium steel Leonardo nib made for them by Yoho. So we've got here a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande with a medium nib. Another fairly wet one. The ink by Diamine and it's Jack Frost. So this is a blue ink, but there should be some hints of a red sheen. So again, I'm going to do a swatch here to give the chance to see if that will come out for us. I do find this is a very subtle sheen in ink anyway. So it'll be interesting to see what happens on this paper. Next up, we're going to go for the Pilot Custom 823, 14 karat gold nib, beautiful pen, one of my favourite pens. So this is a Pilot Custom 823 with a broad and it's a 14 karat gold nib. Try and get a clean finger to swipe that with. I'm having to hold the page down. It's very warm here, very humid, so I've got a desk fan on, which is blowing the paper all over the place. The ink is by Diamine. It's Tobacco Sunburst. Again, this is another nice shading ink. Brown ink with lots of like yellow, pale yellows in there, which we're already seeing. We will come back and have a quick look in a second. Then the final pen, one of my newest pens. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens, 18 karat gold nib. Beautiful, really heavy pen. So we've got here a Visconti. This is a very wet writer. And it's the Homo Sapiens. It's a broad and it's 18 karat gold. I'm going to go on the next line here to do this because it is very wet. And then the ink is by Diamine Earl Grey. I'm just going to do that 
swatch again because I'm going to try and remember to use a clean finger this time so we don't get the red bean mixed in with it. Very, very wet. So there's eight different pens that we've tested it with. So we've already looked very quickly at the top one. So we've seen here, you know, that Jin Hao with that gorgeous greeny gold there, that sheen. We've seen the plainness there and that nice thin line. We've got some shading there on the Navajo turquoise and also on the Ferris wheel press. So we come back to the Asphine, the one we've written with today. Not sure if this is being captured on the camera. Really showing up that star bright really well. Absolutely shining in my face. Just trying different angles to see if I can get the camera to capture that for you. So yeah, with that shimmer ink seems to perform really nicely. With the Memento Zero Grande, seeing quite a bit of the red sheen coming through. Again, not sure if that's being caught on camera or not. Okay. The Pilot Custom 823, again, lots of that nice shade in there. Got, look at that sea where it starts off virtually yellow, then ends up this gorgeous brown colour. I will see that on quite a lot of the letters. Finally, down at the bottom, the Visconti, very wet writer. Where I've written Diamine and the Vion Visconti, I am seeing some feather in there. Not a lot. Don't see any feather in there on the rest of the words or the rest of the letters, but certainly at the start of each sentence, there's a lot. And even now, I think this is, oh no, it's, yeah, I'm still wet now. That's how wet it is. Just going to turn the page over. Well, there you are. The wind did it for me. So looking at it on reverse. So the top, not getting anything really coming through. So there's the Jin Hao. There's the Jin Hao 80. Here's that Noodle as Navajo Turquoise. There we've got the Ferris Wheel Press. Starting to get little bits of show through now when we come down to the Asphine. So that's where I did the scribble. So I can understand that because where I've got writing, it's fine, but where I scribbled, yep, it's coming through. Same with the Memento Zero, where I did the scribble, we're starting to see something coming through, but only a little bit. Where I was writing, yep, nothing really showing through at all. With that Pilot Custom 823, the first few letters I seem to be getting a little bit of show through. Not seeing anything really happening on the front side. Let me just get that there in the camera for you. There we go. But if we go back over, you can see starting to show through a little bit. And with that Visconti, you know, where we had the feathering happening on the front, we've got loads there showing through. We've got loads here. You know, you can see here broad 18 karat gold. So loads showing through there. But yet, nothing on the second line where I put the name of the ink. And to be honest, nothing where I wrote the pen name. So it seems to be a little bit spotty. Could be down to how I'm holding the pen. I'm still getting used to using the pen. It's very, very heavy. If I go to the page opposite it, the only thing where I can see anything is here. There's a little hint of blue from where I did the scribble on the Asphine with that Starbright ink. But the rest of it, even down here where we had a lot coming through on that Visconti, nothing really gone onto that, onto that next page. It's a really quite interesting paper, quite nice looking. I like the fact it's a plane. It's $5 for 28 pages. As I said, works out about nine cents per sheet. So it's actually, when you think about it, it's not overly expensive. You think it might be when you're thinking, well, $5 for one notebook, when I can get a large term for about 25. But when you work out page wise, it's about the same. So I think, yeah, it's really good value. I think it's quite good. And I love the paper. I intend to get some more of these. I think $5, I can quite happily have quite a number of these. And these could quite quickly become my main project driver books. At the moment, I use a four-ish size books that I get from the local big box store. Not really fountain pen friendly. So I do have a lot of issues with ink showing through. But I think these, yeah, I think these could be perfect. I like A5 size notebooks anyway. I like the paper. It's, you know, it's not white. It's not really in your face. The lines aren't in your face. It's got enough lines. I may look to see if I can get a grid version. I do like grids, but I don't mind lined paper either. 
So these, they're my first thoughts on this Apica notebook. Really pleased with it, really happy with this. Glad that my wife bought it for me for Inkvent. As I say, whenever I order from Pulp Edition in the future, what I'm going to do is add in one or two of these into my order anyway. And I think, you know, build up a little collection of them. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got any Apica paper? Have you got this actual identical notebook? Be really interested to see what are people's experiences with it? Are they any different than mine? So why not drop a comment down below? Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.